First, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to be here to, to deliver this talk relate, relating to a type of information Richard, with uh, finite tape. So I, basically, I will talk about uh, how second, the second law and correlation effects comes about from this um, looking at such a information Richard. So the overview of my talk, basically, first I will discuss uh, what information Richard with finite tape is and how it operates. Then I bring in the information processing second law and how it is talk about the physics that goes behind the information Richard. Then uh, I discuss about the correlations, which is uh, very important in extracting work out of this Richard. And I go on to go a bit more on the stationary state where we now see from the physics part how equilibrium and non-equilibrium type of states appear within the information ratchet. Then I go to the more practical aspect, which is the ratchet design, where I give two design, perturbed coin and modified boy, and shows how the ratchet, how we extract uh, optimal work out of the ratchet dynamics. So first, I like to uh, give some background on uh, ratchet system in general. Um, basically, ratchet can be thought of some sort of Maxwell demon, which this morning you heard the talk by Professor Sagawa. So his version is more like the measurement uh, and feedback type. Um, but there is another category, which is called the uh, information ratchet, which is not driven externally, but is more autonomous. It started with uh, work by Mandel and Jasinski, um, and followed up by uh, work by Boyd and uh, Crutchfield. So the Mandel Jasinski, Jasinski information ratchet is continuous time, while the one by Boyd and uh, Crossfield is discrete time. So they are um, basically in information ratchet, we would have a ratchet here. Uh, it will mediate uh, uh, energy transfer between the heat reservoir and the work reservoir, which is what the standard thermodynamics is about. But then uh, in the case covered by uh, the two groups I mentioned before, the tape itself is infinite means the length of the tape is infinite. So that's why they call it the information reservoir. So why, why, well, why, why that is interesting is because typically, normally we cannot extract uh, work out of a heat buff, one heat buff, uh, because that will violate uh, the second law of thermodynamics. But what happens is that by having an information reservoir, we can dump the entropy into the reservoir. So because of that, we can actually extract work out of the one heat buff. So that is the key idea. So now what my work here, our work here is about is to, instead of using an infinite tape of infinite length, our tape is finite. Means you see here, the, the tape is finite length. And not only that, you can see that uh, the bit is recycled. Okay, so that is the, the new aspect of this work. So first I would like to describe the operation of this ratchet with the infinite tape. So in the, um, the interaction actually between the ratchet, which is shown in R here, with the tape is only one bit at a time. So the yellow one is the, the interacting bit. So first, uh, at stage two, the ratchet will attach to this interacting bit. And after that, at the stage three, from stage two to stage three, there's this thermal transition. So you can see that the state of the ratchet has changed to R prime and the state of B um, n change to B n prime. And after that, from stage three to stage four is the stage of detachment, followed by stage four to stage five is what we call switching. So B n prime, which is being output, now goes to the end of the tape, and the new uh, bit that is going to be interacted next will be B n plus one. So in this way, this cycle will repeat itself um, yeah, continuously. So normally we call it in the talk, I would say that this is a bit scan because the scan is between the ratchet and one bit. But well, we know that there's a certain period, right? Because it's a finite tape and recycle. So therefore, if let's say you go through the, all the bit, then we call it a tape scan. Then, yeah, then. So now I would describe the two important process in this operation of the finite tape. First one is the thermal transition. So in the thermal transition, remember that 
the red shirt is acting with the interacting bit. So here we represent the state of the bit as 0 or 1. The state of the red shirt here is A or B. So, but in general, the state of the red shirt can be any number from 1 to nR. And, but basically, when we talk about the thermal transition, we always talk about the tensor product between the interacting bit and the state of the ratchet because it's a single bit, uh, single bit versus ratchet interaction. So the transition is based on a Markovian type of dynamics, which is given by this left stochastic Markov matrix. And we have in this talk, I mean in this uh, work, basically we work on a tridiagonal transition matrix where in the stationary state, uh, it gives an equilibrium distribution. This is for a um, case when we look into the interaction between one bit and uh, the ratchet, but because, well, we are talking about a bit of certain length, L. So my phylactic tape here, we will later specify it to be L. Um, and when we actually perform that uh, evolution, um, we actually use a joint state, means the joint state between the interacting bit, uh, the, the, the ratchet, and also the, the, the bit string of the tape. So that, let's say for example, we have the two bit tape, there will be the, for example, A will be tensor product with zero, zero, or A, B with zero, one, and so on and so forth. And if let's say it's an L, L bit tape, uh, then it will be A with a bit tensor product with a uh, string length of L. Right. So then that would be a, a matrix that is of size 2L times, to the power of L times NR. So that describes the thermal transition. The next important step is the switching step, where the interacting bit switch to the back. So this um, switching uh, is performed by a matrix which is called a permutation matrix. Here I illustrate for the case when the, bit, uh, the tape is of a length 2, L equal 2. But if for a length L, then the permutation matrix actually can be uh, expressed uh, in this form. So um, in our framework, um, we actually take a probabilistic perspective to how the uh, ratchet operate. So as I mentioned, it is a joint tape ratchet states. Um, and this, we describe it by a probability distribution P. So this uh, P itself is a 2 to the power L times NR times 1 vector, uh, where NR is the ratchet states, and the tape if, is of length L. So the time evolution uh, of every bit scan will be, um, we start, for example, we start with some P uh, at time 0, operate with this operator O, then you evolve it to a new uh, set of probability of the joint um, uh, ratchet tape uh, uh, configuration. So the period of this interaction is given by the uh, period tau. And note that, well, as you know, the ratchet operation is consists of first and M followed by S. So therefore, O is a composite operation with two substep: the thermal substep, thermal transition substep, and the switching substep. So with this, actually, we can um, perform the product of the two metrics I shown earlier for the M uh, L metrics and the M uh, S L metrics. So here itself, I illustrate uh, how the the, op, op, the O matrix looks like for two bit tape. It looks something like this. So you see that basically it just uh, consists of the uh, component of the M one matrix, which uh, shown earlier. It just com consists of this component. Uh, basically, because the interaction is only between the interacting bit and the ratchet, so the rest actually is just a repetition. And the, the, all these empty fields here are all zeros. So one uh, aspect that is important for our work here is that this O here has some special mathematical properties. It is uh, ergodic and regular in our design. So because of that, it, had, um, it fulfills what you call the peron frobenius theorem. So for sure, the information ratchet actually will converge to a stationary and unique joint tape ratchet state distribution. So because of the presence of the permutation matrix S, although M itself is tridiagonal, O it is not. Therefore, in, in later on, you will see that the switching operation actually potentially drive the 
information ratchet away from thermal equi from equilibrium. Okay, so first I will summarize um, how the two sub-step works before I talk about how the, the work done is being computed. So the sub-step here is first we start with some P, then operate by the M sub-step, we got this P tilde. Then during this process, there's work done and heat transfer in the, the, uh, for the information ratchet. That's where the ratchet interact with the heat buff and the work buff. For the switching sub-step, it will be the output of this thermal subset P tilde operated by the permutation matrix S, then you form P prime. And here itself, we assume no work done and no heat transfer. And from, with this uh, assumption, we are able to uh, derive the work done for a particle bit scan because, yeah, well, the work actually comes from the Markov transition. So we can see that it involves the transition element of the Markov matrix. Right, so uh, now I come on to discuss about the information processing second law. So, um, well, there's two parts I'd like to uh, mention. Uh, the information processing second law has already been derived by uh, Boyd and uh, Crutchfield. So they derive it in the context of uh, an infinite, uh, a tape of infinite length. Um, and the uh, IPSL actually is based on um, a temporal um, steady state. Means it is, uh, yeah, so they, they take the, the interaction between the ratchet and the, the bit, and then they obtain the work, and then uh, the next one will come, uh, next bit will come, and then they get the work again. There's no recycling because, well, the tape is of infinite length. Um, and, but in our case, we need to show that uh, this IPSL, does it actually also uh, works in the case when it is not infinite length because there's recycling? So this is one question we ask ourselves. Does IPSL continue to hold in such a case? That's number one. That's for finite tape. Next is that um, Boyd and Crutchfield derive it um, for the case of the steady state. But for us, whether IPSL holds in the transient state. We, we do not need to wait for the, the finite tape to go to the, trans, uh, the steady state to, to function. So therefore, you know, we need to check that. So basically, the derivation here is to show that indeed the uh, IPSL holds right, in this case. Um, you can see that uh, right, the work W, mean work W is less than delta HP. So in their case, it's also the mean work less than uh, what they call the entropy rate. But for us, here it is the delta HP itself is the, remember the joint uh, tape distribution. So basically the information processing second law here is, um, is actually our second law. If you take the mean of W, go to, on to the right hand side, right, it is plus mean W, but mean W is equal to actually the negative of heat that's flow through. Um, so therefore it will be delta HP plus Q so you see that here, the basic idea here uh, in the case of the autonomous information ratchet is that the entropy now is broken into two parts. One part is for the physical part, which is the heat. The other part is for the, from the information, which is from the tape. So the entropy now is shared between heat, the physical heat and uh, the information. That's how the autonomous information ratchet works and how you exploit the physics that's underlying uh, the thermodynamics. So um, now, I've been talking about the perspective of the information ratchet from the point of view of a joint uh, tape uh, uh, ratchet configuration. But there's another point of view which is from the, the uh, single bit which is given by uh, this leftmost speed ratchet distribution means the interacting bit and the ratchet dis distribution. So this is a marginal distribution of the joint um, ratchet tape uh, distribution. So by manipulating the indices, actually mathematically, we show that it can be expressed in this form, the mean work. And in fact, this form is more intuitive, in fact, because uh, now you see that it is weighted by the um, single bit interacting uh, ratchet, uh, single interacting bit ratchet distribution, and also, well, is um, related to the, the 
one bit Markov transition matrix. And in this case, we show that the work actually is the same between the joint version and the uh, single interacting bit version. And furthermore, in our further derivation, we show that well, the evolution in terms of this uh, interacting bit versus ratchet distribution uh, follow this uh, is evolved by the single bit Markov matrix, which again is intuitive. Um, it makes intuitive sense. So with that, actually, we have a version of this uh, IPSL with respect to this single interacting bit ratchet uh, distribution. And what is interesting here is that we found that this actually gives us a tighter bound to the IPSL. So previously, it was mean W against delta HP, which is the joint. But here, we show that actually um, this uh, single interacting bit version lies between them. So it gives a tighter bound. Um, this is one advantage of it. Another advantage of it is that it uh, provides us uh, uh, the detail on um, something called the correlation. So this is something is important for how to extract work out of the information ratchet. So let me say a bit more of that. So in the original perspective, based on the joint, uh, we cannot actually perceive that correlation. But when we go on to probe it based on the single interacting bit, this expression shows that this joint, uh, the, the entropy from the joint distribution actually uh, consists of the a sum of the entropy of the single interacting bit version plus a change delta C, where the effect of correlation can be uh, uh, derived. So we work on the math of this delta C and it gives us two, two uh, meaning. The first meaning, when we obtain, uh, work out this delta C, the derivation eventually leads us to this term, this uh, mutual information term, um, which is greater or equal to zero. So this mutual information term actually has been worked out by Boyd in one of his paper, and it quantifies some sort of uh, modularity dissipation. Um, there is a loss of well, because well, when sometimes when you have your, your system, you describe it into a modular structure, and then you do computation modularly. And when you do that, actually you lost, you didn't care about some of the global correlation. Due to the uh, ignorance of that, there is dissipation. So um, that delta C captures that. So this happens also in our case because we uh, have the, the ratchet interact with only a single interacting bit, but we did not really interact with the rest right, of the, the bit in the, the length, uh, of length N, uh, of length L. So there is this modularity dissipation also happened. And delta C actually uh, captures that. This is one uh, meaning of it. Another meaning is that we can break, decompose delta C into three terms. Um, so it is the change of mutual information between, for example, first term is the interacting bit with the ratchet, the mutual information between the interacting bit with the rest of the bit of the tape. And the last one is the change of mutual information between the tape and the ratchet. So later, I'm going to show result of um, yeah, the, the value of all these three components of the change of mutual information. OK, so now, uh, next I'm going to talk about stationary states, why it is something of interest uh, to us in this problem. So, uh, recall that uh, our uh, operator O has a unique stationary distribution um, at time infinity uh, because of the design. We want it to be regular. So um, when you become, uh, 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 when you lead to this stationary distribution, um, we, we can see that based on the IPSL, which is like this, um, the finally, the, the, the P itself is the same. So there will be no change in entropy. So delta HP actually goes to zero. Yeah. So eventually, um, based on IPSL, um, the work actually could saturate, also go to zero. So later you will see that there will be two cases. One, the work go to, expected work go to zero. The other one, the expected work go to negative. But why this 
now I'd like to discuss why stationary state is, is interesting, because when that happens, means that we can no longer extract work anymore. Um, this is unlike the infinite tape case, where they keep, can keep on forever in extracting work. But for finite tape, after a while, you cannot extract anymore. Why? It's reasonable, because, well, there's a finite memory capacity. So why we can actually exploit this is because of the memory capacity. So this actually describes it. So uh, the stationary state actually describes it. So and nonetheless, we from here, based on this result, you can see that there could be only two situations. Um, first, um, when, when M L act on the pi L bit in this stationary case, it gives you back pi L bit. And then when S L act on it, it gives give you back pi L bit. This is what we call the equilibrium stationary state. Um, reason because, well, we know that ML is, as mentioned, tridiagonal, so this must be equilibrium. Next is that there could be a non-equilibrium stationary state, it means that when ML act on pi L bit, actually become something else, pi tilde L bit. And then when S act on it, it brings it back to pi L bit. So this is a possible, actually we observe this. And this is the interesting one because now we can see that this switching actually drive it away from equilibrium. But then, well, um, and then, and then ML got to bring it back. So that's, that's how this is interesting. This gives uh, the importance of this understanding of these stationary states. So now uh, with this, actually, we established two key results, two theorems um, uh, in, in our context. So let, let me just describe it. So uh, for a finite tape of length L, information ratchet, with a corresponding one bit thermal transition matrix M1 that is tri diagonal and regular, the Ratchet system will converge to an equilibrium stationary state if and only if this delta C infinity is equal to zero. Remember that we have this correlation, which shows that actually we can prove that if this goes to zero, it will always be an equilibrium stationary state. And the finite tape, this finite tape, when it is uh, uh, happened in this equilibrium stationary state, will have uh, the expected mean work to be zero. So this is the summary, summary of this theorem, and I, I, because of the time, I'm not able to show you the proof, um, but we have a paper to, to, to show the details. So corresponding to the equilibrium stationary state, we have the second theorem, which is for the non-equilibrium stationary state, and that actually happens when delta C infinity is greater than zero. And the interesting thing is that when this happens, uh, the asymptotic work W infinity is less than zero when it is under this non-equilibrium stationary state, which makes sense because previously, you look at uh, here, it's zero, it is zero, um, and it is only, W is negative, so it still fulfill the, uh, still fulfill the uh, IPSL, okay. And again, we prove this rigorously, yeah, in this case. Okay, so this gives us the, the context uh, and the, the condition. So now I go on and talk about the two designs that go on for us to study the system. So one of them is the perturbed coin, and the other one is perturbed coin is on the left, and modified boy is on the right. So um, you can see that both are tridiagonal matrix, and uh, perturbed coin is the uh, one with the ratchet have only one state. You can see it's A. So it's the simplest one, and because it has one A, actually he is not able to uh, provide the correlation. So the, the, the in a sense, yeah, that it cannot provide because he has no memory to do it. Okay. So he has one bit memory. That memory is not sufficient to, to provide that correlation. No, it's not one bit memory, zero bit memory, right? Because A itself is just one, uh, one state. Um, and so the memory here, uh, here I'm talking about the ratchet memory, not the, the tape memory. So here itself, the, the boy is have uh, one bit memory uh, or the state of uh, two state A, B, um, and for Boyd, actually, you can uh, exploit the correlation. That's what I'm going to show. So the perturbed coin is the simplest uh, situation with um, no correlation effect, and the Boyd is the simplest one that has. So that's why these two are chosen. So uh, first will be the perturbed coin. So in the stationary state, because it's not able to uh, harness any of the correlation, um, so therefore, uh, the three terms, right, um, of the three terms, the last two terms between the, um, the, the first term, which is the ratchet and the interacting bit, 
uh, zero means these three terms. Sorry. Oh. This three term, this term is zero because the ratchet has uh, no memory and this term is also zero. So the only term that is non-zero is this one. Well, well, because the tape itself could have memory. So the figure here actually illustrates the, the case when uh, you have a tape that started with some correlation effect. Um, then as time goes, you see that the the correlation actually goes to zero because, well, uh, the, the, the design of the perturbed coin cannot generate any correlation. So it converges finally to delta, uh, delta C equal to zero because everything is saturated. This, this one also, delta C, also go to zero as shown here. Then based on our theorem, uh, it will go to equilibrium saturation state and therefore the work done is zero. But nonetheless, well, later you see that we, we still harness work out of this uh, perturbed coin during the transient phase. So this is the part where we will try to collect the work cumulatively. So next, we talk about the modified boy. Modified boy have two situations. One is non-equilibrium and one is equilibrium. We are interested in the equilibrium one. So therefore, I've talked about the non-equilibrium one, which is something we observe and a surprise to us when we first study the system. So um, modified boy has one bit of uh, ratchet memory and therefore, it can create correlation. Um, and we observe actually from here, um, the correlation, uh, the blue one, right, for the three terms. So this is the one, the first, first term, the second term, and the third term. Um, you can see that there's correlation, but as mentioned, this is a change that is uh, important for us to understand uh, about the correlation effect. So the change is in the inset. So that as you see, as time goes, the Two, two terms on the on the end actually converge to zero, but the one that is between the uh, interacting bit and the ratchet actually saturate to some positive value. So therefore, that delta C itself is not zero in this case uh, in the stationary state. In fact, it's to some positive value. Therefore, the modified boy under certain parameter that uh, fulfill this will have actually uh, a non-equilibrium stationary state. And in this non-equilibrium stationary state, uh, we also observe the negative work, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so in this case, we basically not using this part of the parameter uh, for the modified boy. The one that we actually exploit is this part, which is the equilibrium stationary state. So for a selected set of parameter values, actually the modified boy can converge to an equilibrium stationary state. Um, to derive that, actually remember that we have this stationary condition uh, earlier, uh, which is M, uh, L, operating on the P, uh, on pi, equal to pi. So we use that constraint and uh, work out and derive this equation. So therefore, the P, Q, and epsilon value must fulfill this equation. And once we have that, um, you'll have a uh, design that actually converge to an equilibrium stationary state. Here itself, it shows that indeed it is so. So you see that the delta C goes to zero here, go to zero here and go to zero here for the, for the three cases. Yeah, so, right. So with that, we go on to uh, understand the underlying physics of this finite tape. Now we can now exploit the transient phase to extract the work. So here itself is a, 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 a a plot of the, the PQ, the, 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 the uh, axis is P and this is Q, and you show what, what sort of uh, functionality the finite tape uh, has. So there are three functional regimes. The first one is engine, right? This is the IPSL. You can see that in this regime, IPSL fulfill and work itself is positive. So we are extracting work from there. But you can also act as an erasure, where now work is used to uh, clean up the bit, means you do erase the bit. So that's why you see the delta H is less than zero. It become more and more ordered uh, by using work to, yeah, expanding work out of it. So there's one more regime which is called the dart. So this regime is when the work is negative and the uh, delta H is positive. So this is useless, not, not, not useful. So this is called a dart. 
So you can see that as uh, we go through the bit scan, yeah, there could be changes even for the same parameter value. So you can see dot here it can be green, uh, which is a dot. The next moment it become uh, red, then it become blue, become red. So it can change functionality as it evolves. But nonetheless, our uh, what we need is a ratchet that perform positive work extraction. So because non equivalent stationary state is giving us to negative work extraction, so we yeah we are only concerned with uh, ratchet design that operates in equivalent stationary state, and um, we are extracting the cumulative expected work uh, for that. So how do we extract optimal work? Um, so um, we actually consist of uh, different uh, initial state. Uh, we show that actually the definite state zero zero is the one that gives rise to actually uh, uh, the maximum work. So for the initial state, so then you see that from here the zero zero is the one. Then we choose that uh, uh, as our, our case, and then you can see that uh, after choosing that, right? Um, you can see zero zero is the one that is here, blue one. Yeah, as time goes, it goes to uh, zero, but the rest actually is negative work. So this zero zero actually give us the maximum cum cumulative one. But this is for a particular PQ value. So later we are going to optimize again uh, by scanning through all the PQ for the equivalent stationary state. So um, right. So here you see we perf compare between the perturb coin and ratchet. Remember that the ratchet actually has uh, able to exploit correlation. So we see that indeed uh, always the modified boy perform better than the perturb, uh, perturb coin. And then we also see that when the length of the tape increases, the community work extracted is small. So this makes sense also because there's more memory capacity. Right. So here itself, you, you can see that uh, the convergence to the stationary state, equilibrium stationary state for the perturb coin is faster versus that for the uh, modified boy. Right. So you can see that sometimes you know, it, it can go to negative work, but we will still add it. So therefore, this will subtract away the cumulative work as a result. So this is uh, the last slide for my result, and after that, I will conclude. So here itself is a summarize on um, what we can work with from the tool design. So we observe first that uh, as the length of the bit increases, uh, more work is extracted. And then we see that actually between the modified boy and the perturbed coin, um, higher cumulative work can be extracted from the modified boy. And this comes about because you know, the time to decay actually is longer of the modified boy compared to the perturbed coin. So this is uh, what we observe. So uh, finally, this is uh, the conclusion. So our design finite tape information ratio actually obeys the information processing second law and it can serve in different regimes like engine, eraser, and dart. Um, and also more expected work uh, is obtained from the intrinsic correlation within the system, especially when uh, Richard, uh, with memory generated during the operation, the correlation is being generated during the operation. And also uh, the finite tape actually displays stationary states that are in equilibrium or out of equilibrium. And these are related to the effects of correlation of the Richard system. So we, we have uh, a paper already published in PRE on this, and then the another one we submitted to PRE. And lastly, I'd like to um, just thank my collaborator, which is uh, Yen Jie He, Andrew Pradana, and Jian um, um, Wei Cheong for uh, this exciting work, piece of work. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, because we are running out of time, very short question is possible, I think. No one? Okay, I have a w one short question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in a usual sense, you said that the uh, operator is uh, er ergodic mm. and also the regular. Yeah. So in a usual sense, as ergodic correspond to the chaotic and the regular usually in correspond to the, the integral systems. Mm. Can you elaborate it shortly? Okay. okay. So I, I elaborate the meaning of this ergodic and uh, regular. So um, in the case of uh, ergodic means that um, it will explore 
um, all the different uh, distribution. So it will not like converge to some periodic distribution and like an attractor inside that matrix. So you will explore everything and there's no specific attractor. Because if there's a specific attractor, then you're stuck, stuck there and you will not go on to the stationary state. Yeah. So that is the meaning of both ergodic and regular. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Let's thank speaker again. Okay.